Joining me live here is Jeff Weaver, campaign manager for Bernie Sanders' uh, campaign. Uh, Jeff, always good to see you. Um, Thanks, Jake. I'm, uh, I don't know about you, but, but these, uh, these emails are, are pretty stunning. They are, they are stunning, and it's very, very disappointing that you see uh, in black and white how uh, top officials at the DNC uh, were plotting to put a negative stories about, out about Senator Sanders, about how they plan to attack him on his religion. It's really, I mean, that's just not what the Democratic Party is about. The chief financial officer, um, Tom Marshall, I think is his name, was the one talking about the religion and whether Bernie was Jewish or believed in God or was an atheist or whatever, and how that might uh, help Hillary presumably win voters in Kentucky and West Virginia. Right. Uh, is there any evidence that any of these plots actually went to reporters and were pitched right. as stories? Well, it's hard to know because, as you know, a lot of times reporters get off the record uh, documents and they're, they're loath to give up their sources. So it's, it's difficult to document when these things uh, uh, happen. But uh, what is really very um, uh, disturbing is, is you had not only the CFO, but you had the top staffer at the DNC, Amy Dacey, responding to that whole uh, chain with the word amen. So it was clearly from the top, you know, the top, all the top people were uh, involved and it's very disappointing. And I think, you know, it's great that Debbie Wasserman Schultz is not going to be speaking here, but look, last week we saw in the Republican uh, convention, we spent 48 hours with a drip, drip, drip as the, they refused to deal with the fact that uh, Mrs. Trump had obviously lifted some lines from Michelle Obama's a speech. I think that, that we should show as Democrats that we're a, a little more mature than that. There's obviously a problem here. Uh, someone should resign. It should be Debbie Wasserman Schultz should resign. Maybe some staffers should resign. Are we just got to pull the Band-Aid off this, get past it. I mean, there's likely to be more emails released in the next couple of days, and I'm sure there are other time periods in the campaign, which you're aware of, like the data breach uh, time period, where there was a lot of tension, and I'm sure those emails will be even worse. You're, so you're, uh, Senator Sanders and you have been calling for Debbie Wasserman Schultz to, to resign as chair of the DNC for a long, long time. What happens if she doesn't do it this week and the people who, and, and there isn't any evidence of Wasserman Schultz actually involved on, on the emails, at least leaked so far, uh, plotting, that's all her senior staffers, and I, I get holding the chief, the chairman or chairwoman responsible. But what if neither she nor any of these top officials who actually did the conspiring resign? Then what? What happens to the Sanders supporters? What happens to the unity the Democrats so desperately want and need? Right. We're here this week to celebrate the unity of the Democratic Party, uh, to make the case why Hillary Clinton should be the next president of the United States. You why? still think that? Of course. Why we need to defeat Donald Trump. I mean, these are, this is the message we want to talk about. We don't want to be sitting here talking about uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz's handling of the DNC, which was obviously a, a real problem from the get-go. And we've, uh, as you pointed out, have pointed out throughout the campaign. Uh, but now we have this new evidence of problems at the DNC. We need to get by this. And one of the reasons, to, one of the ways to get by this is for Debbie Wasserman Schultz to step down for the good of the party, put in somebody else who uh, uh, will be a more unifying figure so that we can bring the party together, so that we can stop talking about this, so we can start talking about uh, the progressive change that we need in this country uh, and move forward. What if they don't? Well, I think, I think that would be a really big mistake. I mean, I think uh, what, it will send a message to the supporters of Bernie Sanders and others that uh, this is not being taken seriously. This is a really a serious offense, particularly the subject matter where you're going to attack people on their religion. I mean, even if they were going to do it against a Republican, it would be a terrible thing, right? I mean, it's just not the way that we do politics. It's clearly offensive, uh, no matter how you slice it. Um, Robbie Mook, the campaign ch uh, chairman, uh, the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton, uh, was on the show. Uh, you heard him say there need to be repercussions. He wouldn't go into detail. But he also said that this was the fault of, according to the experts that he was citing, right. Russians, Russians hacking into the DNC, Russians giving the emails, presumably, to WikiLeaks. And, and his suggestion was that Russians were doing this to undermine Hillary Clinton to help Donald Trump. There wasn't a lot of evidence there, just a lot of re references to, to experts saying this. Right. What's your take? Well, I mean, if that is clearly the case, that's an issue that has to be dealt with. If, if there was some kind of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russian intelligence or Russian hackers, that clearly has to be dealt with. But that doesn't, that doesn't get away from the fact that the substance of these emails uh, shows that the DNC was clearly putting its finger on the scale against uh, Senator Sanders. And I mean, it does, and it raises other issues. Why is the DNC's a system so fragile that these people can hack into it. I mean, you know this whole data breach issue uh, where we complained about how the firewall at the DNC had just fallen down. I mean, this is the, this is another example of mismanagement over there when you have a, a, an, an internet system that is so fragile that these guys can just come in and take what they want. I haven't heard you comment on the emails that Debbie Wasserman Schultz sent uh, referring to you in some less than flattering terms. Any thoughts? No, no, listen, listen, Jake, let me tell you the truth. 
I like to sit at my, at my dining room table with a glass of wine and read all the mean tweets and emails about me, uh, and I howl like a wolf. It's very funny. The worse they are, the better they are. So that didn't bother you at all? Not at all.